All right. I am continuing ranking every episode of The Office. And I think I'm think I'm doing 45 to 36 this time. And this time I have someone to talk to. Yay! Katie, Hello. Katie, how you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so excited. I've been doing, I, I started this from, I think, the, I think there's 180 episodes and it's just me talking about each episode and I hate talking. I, I, I need people to talk to. I can't do, I can't do podcasts alone. I don't know how people do it, whether they just do monologues and stuff like that. I can't do it. I need people to talk I'm, to. I am the exact same way. <laughs> I just, I just, I just can't. It's like, I'm just sick of hearing myself. Yeah, I know. All feeling. right. <laughs> Let's get started. All right. Number 45, season five, episode nine, frame Toby. When Michael discovers that corporate has brought back Toby to replace Holly, he tries to frame, frame him to get him fired. Meanwhile, Pam has issues with disgusting microwave and Jim surprises Pam by buying a house. This is one of the most famous cold opens ever. When Michael just says, no, I'm coming down, I'm coming down, I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Uh, this is just, uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's just, I don't know. And, and apparently in the script, all, all the script said was Michael just supposed to scream and, and Steve Carell just <laughs> ran with it and just, just, just made it his own. And well, that's it's so amazing. good. Right. Cause it turned into the best meme. I don't I can't tell you how many times I have used that meme when I'm saying no to someone. <laughs> there are there are so many go-to memes and this is definitely one of them because it's perfect. It's a perfect to, to, to exclaim when you're just freaked out about something or something. So uh yeah, this is uh, Toby was um uh, in Costa Rica and okay, so I I just did the episode where he um put his hand on Pam's knee. Because they were they were locked in the office or something like they put his hands on Pam's knee and everybody's looking at him why he's why he's rubbing Pam's leg he's like um hey I'm going to Costa Rica and I'm just gonna <laughs> he just jumps the fence and runs away that was that was so funny so so Toby is back from Costa Rica and and Pam and Dwight can't understand it's like how did you not know this he's been here a week even David Wallace is like how do you how do you do you know do you know your own people dude like what is this. So, uh, so good. Michael says, is there any way we could get rid of him? And David Wallace says, not without cause, Michael. And Michael says, I have cause. It's, it's cause I hate him. Um, <laughs> Which like, if only we could use that excuse, right? <laughs> oh man, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I got cause cause you <laughs> suck. Um, so, so that, that, so they keep trying to get, to try to figure out how to get rid of Toby um and they 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 try to they try to to get him to, to punch him or something like that trying to get him into a fight that didn't work and finally michael buys <laughs> he buys two pounds of marijuana from the fans refrigeration <laughs> first of all how do you th how did he think that was two pounds of anything it was a little bag like what is this it's like some dense material or something like that it's and it's the optical optical illusion of two pounds in I, michael scott's world I, I, yeah yeah he, he must you know he, he he's probably so happy that that they they quote unquote had drugs so it's like oh yeah hey i, I got the, i got the <laughs> stuff for for the low low price of five hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine the warehouse guys or the, those advanced refrigeration guys or like somebody comes up to you is like i want drugs and like the, the smart guy that whispers to him is like, give him your salad. <laughs> we just made 500 bucks off giving someone our salad. Like, it's like be perfect because they like, I'm sorry, they like read him, right? Like, they just totally read Michael Scott and they were like, we're going to get this guy. Watch this. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> perfect. And who just happens to have $500 in cash in their wallet? Like, oh, here you go. I don't know, but like, can they come find me? Because I could seriously, <laughs> seriously, I'll, I'll, I'll sell you my salad. You could, I'll throw in the dressing. My goodness. Um. So, so Michael plants the, the, uh, the, the drugs, and then he really regrets it, and the, and the, the cops come, and, uh, and. And they and Michael's like, no, 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 it's nothing. No, no, it's nothing. It's nothing. It was mine. And it's, the, the guy's like, it's a salad. Um, 
I loved when the cops came in and, and Creed sees him and he freaks out. And he just he just hides in the uh, in the in the talking head thing. Is like, let's just pretend while we're talking until the cops leave. <laughs> Whenever like the cops show up or like in in other episodes when it, there could be potential of a crime, Creed's always like, I'm the he's the first one out or the first one to hide. And it's just so good because you're like, what's your deal, Creed? What's going on here? Creed's a straight up murderer. I don't know what the heck. Oh well, yeah, there was that he's, one. He's the Scranton Strangler. <laughs> oh, he could be. Oh my goodness. People think it's Toby, but I'll bet it. Yeah, maybe it is Creed. Um the um the 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 one Halloween episode where he has blood splattered all over him. He's like, oh, it's Halloween. How, what a night, what a good coincidence. Or something. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. That's when you're like, wait, dude, wait a minute. <laughs> dude, what are you doing? Um uh, the the other oh oh so the, all, another story was Pam goes to microwave something and the microwave is totally disgusting so she puts up a note and then there was a note war going on and then and finally they're all yelling at each other about the microwave any office i've ever been in this is an issue the microwave is, is always disgusting and nobody yeah. wants to clean it and there's 100 percent always a note that says you're disgusting whoever made this mess clean it up yeah every single time and they don't and they don't. No. Uh, the, there's no note war. The note war is 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 good. I mean, like, oh like my gosh, think, the note war is perfect. Um, I think I think it was Creed that wrote, Creed again. Creed was like, like you're all disgusting, and whoever I find out, whoever I find out who wrote this note, I'm gonna punch him or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, but that that I love, is good. I love Angela's response to Pam's note because she's like, I'm jealous I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also somebody drew a penis on Pam's note and Angela's like, this, it was is Phyllis. this is Phyllis. <laughs> <laughs> it was from Phyllis. And, and, uh, and Pam accuses, I mean, Angela accuses Pam of it. It's like, why do you think I would draw a penis on my exactly. own note? And Angela <laughs> says, the same reason you draw, you wear bright colors to get attention. <laughs> Angela. Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was amazing. I also love when anytime Ryan and Pam are talking because they just hate each other so much. And oh, Ryan's, yeah. like, Ryan's like, "Hey, I I know I know there's notes and stuff. I'm with you, but you got to clean this." And and Pam's like, "But you're the temp. That's your job." He's like, "Ah, oh, I don't know what I would do. I would just make it worse. Really, <laughs> wiping paper towel would make it worse." Like, ah, I don't know that stuff. Like, oh my. It's like you've never cleaned up anything before. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But that's that's such a great scenario. Um, in one place I worked, somebody left a spoon in the sink and the president of the company went nuts. He rewrote notes. He also installed a camera in the kitchen to catch whoever whoever would do such a thing. That's um a little extreme people office office stuff is like if, if you steal someone's um food from the refrigerator you you could there, there could be a fist fight listen don't fool around with that stuff i'm not gonna say whether or not i have made the x-lax brownies oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not gonna say whether or not at one point in time a co-worker got sick and left because of said brownies oh i'll leave that up to you guys to decide oh my goodness that that is amazing <laughs> uh the other thing from this episode is jim bought pam a house he bought the, the house that he lived in that from his parents he bought her a house without telling her and i can never wrap my mind around this concept if your boyfriend, spouse, partner, whatever, buys a house without telling you. If, if I did this with my wife, she, she would kill me. Like, how, how do you do one of the biggest decisions of your life and not include the other person? Listen, this is a big no-no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do this. Oh, my god. Unless you are like talking about buying a house and you've looked at the house and you're like, I really like this house. Right. But not just like out of the blue, like, Hey, I bought this house. Isn't it great? Most people are going to be like, what? <laughs> Bro, dude, I don't. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I know apparently he was doing it to help his parents or whatever. I don't care. At least let her know. Like, yeah, clue her, clue her in on it or something. Like, hey, yeah, how would you feel about buying this house? Yeah, and uh, I, I just, I just um, heard the uh, the Office Ladies podcast about this, and even even Jenna Fisher was like, I don't know how, like, I like, like, I would never allow <laughs> such a thing, but I'm like, I had to act like this is okay, like, oh, like I, I don't know, I don't know. This is this is one of the the. The, the the craziest things I've ever seen. So um the the episode ends with with Dwight describing the perfect crime of how he breaks into Tiffany's, goes for the chandelier, makes love to a woman. 30 years later, he has a son. Uh he leaves her in Mexico or he goes to Canada. He decides to meet her in Paris or Germany or something like that, and he takes the chandelier. This is one of the greatest monologues ever. First of all, first of all, memorizing all this is impressive, but this is just one of the greatest written stories I've ever heard. And and Rain, kudos to Rain Wilson for getting through it because I don't know if I can get through it without busting out laughing. It's amazing. I want to know how many takes it took. I know, I know. I yeah. How many? Like how? It's just, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Especially when Parker says, "This is where the story gets interesting." Like, I, I, I couldn't, I can't, I, I, I just can't. Uh, I want to be able to keep a straight face. Absolutely I know, not. no, no. It's, 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 it's amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> All right, it's number forty-four, season two, episode seven, "The Client," with Michael and Jan Levinson Gould away from the office to land the client. Uh, uh, the staff discovers an unscripted screenplay in Michael's office. And that unscripted screenplay is threat level midnight. Oh Which, my goodness. This is where we're first introduced to yes. that. Yes, this is where yes. we're first introduced. Even <laughs> there's even drawings yes. with uh with with Agent Michael Scar. <laughs> I want to know, did Michael do those drawings? Because I didn't he had know to he have. Could, I didn't know he could draw like that. Right. That was those are very good. Those are very good drawings. They're like fresh out of a comic cover. Like, I'm yeah, like, hmm, let's go, yeah. Michael. Yeah, that's that's impressive. I mean, I mean, come up with a screenplay. I don't care how silly it is. Come up with your own screen, your own movie. <laughs> that is really impressive. I don't care how you know disjointed or stupid or whatever it is, from, from beginning to middle to end, just to to, to 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 write your own screenplay, original screenplay. That is impressive stuff. It is. It is because I'll tell you what. So I used to do these little parody videos on YouTube and that's kind of a shameless plug, but they're like buried deep from like years and years ago anyway. Um, and I would be a CEO of a gaming company and also the game developer for the gaming company. And it was, first of all, getting through those takes was a nightmare because I'm no actress, <laughs> but to figure out what to write and how to write and how to make the dialogue flow was how not an how easy long task. Was? How, how long were, were these were these videos? Like five to seven minutes. Yeah. And it took a, probably an, an enormous amount of work just to put together a five to seven minute video. And here, Michael is putting together like basically an hour or two movie. Yes. <laughs> Which is impressive crazy. as hell. It's impressive. Um, I, I, one thing that, that just floors me about this is they all read the screenplay and they're staying after work to, read a screen, to just read a screenplay to do it like a like a like a table read of a screenplay. I don't know if that shows how bored they are at work or how boring their lives are outside of work or just how committed they are to finishing this screenplay Yeah, because they yeah. want to see how it ends. I mean, Roy goes to pick up Pam to say, OK, let's let's go home. And she's like, no, 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 I'm staying late. <laughs> she's the receptionist like what the hell are you staying late for exactly to, like to, to write the, we're, we're doing a table read of a screen of a screenplay we just found it like he's like uh okay like i think if i ever did that my boyfriend would be like what <laughs> like clearly you're staying late because there, there's there's a, there's an important thing going on at work no 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 it's no. silly <laughs> it's just for a silly reason like Oh, that's why we have to cancel dinner. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, that's great. You this do is, this. I'll go to the bar. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm go. So, <laughs> um, yeah, they, they stay late, and there's this um really sweet moment where 
Jim and Pam go up to the roof in their uh, Jim made uh, some really bad uh, grilled cheese sandwiches and it's really sweet. And then Jim ruins it. Uh, I think the next day by saying, Oh, so we had a date, huh? So I was like, like, dude, she, come on, man. She's, she, she's engaged. What are you doing? What are you, why are you talking about having a date with a girl that's engaged, man? Come on. He was so persistent with her. Like it was yeah. kind of crazy. If yeah. You look back at it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, like if, if that's my, if that's my fiance and I find out some dude is hitting on her that bad, I'm like, well, there's, we're, we're having words, bro. That's, that's, that's not cool. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I I'm, I, it's a very interesting dynamic to see the two of them in the very beginning, like when she's engaged to Roy and how they interact and then when her and Roy break up and, you know, it's kind of like, hmm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's. Yeah, season season two is is one thing, and then and then season three when when Jim goes away, and I mean I to, I totally don't blame him, but at the same time, I mean yeah, okay, fine, he put himself out there, but like, man, I don't know, I don't know, that's that's that could be that's a whole other discussion. Uh, the the other main thing is Michael and Jan go on a sales call with this uh, guy from Lackawanna County, and it's a big potential big account. And Michael is being a total goofball and Jan just wants to do straight up business. I think they were originally supposed to have the meeting in a hotel or, or like some conference room or something yeah, like that. Some, like a conference room and Michael changed it to Chili's. To Chili's. I believe it was Chili's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. do those even exist anymore still? Yes, they do. There Sorry, are, there are Chili's. Yeah. <laughs> Not the Chili's from the Dundies. This is a different location. That's Apparently right. Scranton has many, many brand, many locations of Chili's throughout the area. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's being a total goofball. He's telling jokes. Uh, they do the, I want my baby back, baby back, baby. And the, and the guy's it's, loving it. It's so great. Like the chemistry between them is so good. And Jan's just sitting there drinking a margarita like get me out of here like make Jan this let's thinking, get the sale and let's I, go yeah i want to kill this guy you're ruining everything mm -hmm. and at the end this is what makes michael such a great salesman he gets to know to people and he connects with them and then he's and he, and he gets the business and and uh and and when jan realizes that that it worked she just has the biggest smile on her face and it's like oh we did this and then they go to a hotel and probably do it or something like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, the oh the other thing is so she they they just found out. I guess she just got divorced. And yes. and the last thing you want to talk about is your personal life and business. It, but Michael keeps it's like, what happened? What happened? What happened with your divorce? Why'd you get divorced? Like, and and meanwhile, like that's like she's like his superior so like yeah you know it's very inappropriate as her employee for her to her for him to be asking her those questions but when is michael scott ever not i, I was gonna say in in real life he's fired like five minutes into oh. his career a hundred percent yeah yeah so yeah they go together to the hotel and who knows um there was that one when when uh jim blows it with uh pam and michael and kind of blows it with with jan or something like that uh they, jim and uh michael just look at each other like <laughs> women what are you gonna do <laughs> all i did all i did was hit on, on a girl that's uh that's that's getting married and all i did was hit on my boss like what what <laughs> women who I can love, understand them i love how dwight watches jan come back out of, and get out of the cab He's just like peeking out the window and he's kind of all confused about what happened. He's like, wait a minute. What, what's going on here? <laughs> did, did Dwight stay over? Did Dwight slept over because they were reading? <laughs> they were reading oh, th Threat that, Level Midnight. <laughs> Threat Level Midnight. And, and in the script, Michael, Michael re like did a replace of everywhere. It was like the, the bumbling idiot servant or whatever was named Dwight, but he like Wink. replaced it. With, yeah, but there was one as a Dwight or something like because he misspelled it. It's oh, like he my. had Dwight and then yeah. delete it all. Yeah, yeah. 
Amazing. Number 43, season four, episode five, local ad. When Dunder Mifflin hires an ad company to film a national commercial, the Scranton branch makes one of their own. When Andy brags to Dwight about his new relationship with Angela, Dwight retreats into second life. Um, the cold open is just they're they're thinking of ideas for the commercial, but then Andy says, How about how about a jingle? Give me a break, give me a break, break me off a piece of that. Uh, 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 applesauce <laughs> and they couldn't and no, he, he couldn't figure it out and I, I love it. it's like football cream snickers bar gray poop on. and then at, at the end he says ah fancy feast it's cat food nailed it yes <laughs> good job andy it's so good because i'm almost wondering if that was like the show's way of getting around like having to have rights for that song so right kept- right yeah I'm not, I'm not talking about Kit Kats. I'm talking about, about <laughs> cat food. What? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So they're they're They decided Thunder Mifflin decided to do ads in each uh, location. And, and Michael just wants to do the most over what do you call MTV on crack or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> like, he has all these ideas and the guy's like, you know what? Forget this. And and Michael's like, I'll just make my own. And and Ryan and David Wallace are like, what, what, what is going on? You fired them? What is going on? He's like, I'll, I'll make my own. And at the end, it's just the stock thing with everybody. At the end, everybody's waving. But then they show the director's cut. They show the Michael Scott cuts. And it's just, it's amazing. It's actually really so good. good. Yeah. So like they good. totally. I was so mad when I first saw that episode. I was like, why didn't they use that? That's such like a good, like you feel connected with this paper company. Like, you know, them. They, they're taking something as silly as paper and making it personal. And exactly. You know, Kelly in India opening up with a paper that says, I love you. And then Andy on, on a newspaper and Dwight giving Phyllis a paper that says, um, you have a son and it is me <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Stanley changing his life because he sees a, 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 a employment ad for Dunder Mifflin. And then uh, it's just, it's, it's so good. Mm-hmm. And then um, they asked um, Pam to do the, uh, the animation and she worked, she worked really hard on the animation and they showed at the bar at the end and everybody's like, yeah, great job. And, and um, Jim's Bragg is like, yeah, she did the, she did the animation. How good. And the, the bartender was like, Hey, yeah. So uh, you ever been on a motorcycle? And Jim's like, Oh yeah, no, she's with me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That was um, classic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Andy is bragging to Dwight about, uh being with Angela and, and Dwight is just so so sad and he goes into second life and then Jim makes his own second life character to, to I guess prank Dwight or something like that. But Jim is Philly Jim with a guitar and he's a sports writer in Philly. Like, oh, this is your dream, huh? We, we, we'll see this later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, and the jingle. The jingle they made was really good too. Like it was oh. really catchy, right? Mm-hmm. Call Michael or Stanley, Jim or Dwight or Creed. Call Annie and Kelly for your business needs. It was really good. Mm-hmm. It's very catchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that, even that would have been would have been would have been a good commercial. Uh, number 42, season five, episode 19, Golden Ticket. Michael asks Dwight to be the scapegoat for one of his business ideas that backfires badly on him. But when he, the idea has an unexpected positive upside, Dwight still takes credit and Michael becomes furious. Um, I just love how Jim and Pam back Dwight and they're like, yeah, good idea, Dwight. Good job. And Michael's just like, what? What? <laughs> I remember very vividly when first watching this episode. I was so angry at Michael because it looked so obvious. And we've seen this before where, like oh, when, yes. where, with, the, with the P or something like that, where he tell he makes Dwight take the fall for him. And surely that means that Dwight's going to be fired. It's like, my man, my, Michael, you've gone too far. This is terrible. You're costing someone his job. And then when it backfires, yeah, I remember because because um, Jim and Pam are never on Dwight's side, but they no. were on this side. That was just so surprising. And, they were like, uh, Michael, you can't let Dwight take the fall for this. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, nope, nope. It was Michael. And the, the diaries. Oh, my gosh. The dueling diaries was oh. hilarious. Yes. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's in my diary. It says, oh, Dwight had this great idea. I was like, it's right in the diary. Here's, um, 
here's one thing that that makes you suspend disbelief you know a documentary crew is watching the entire thing <laughs> you know they're filming this entire thing so if, if someone says no i didn't do that i didn't wear a willy wonka suit and put things like you know it's right here on you. which the willy wonka costume that michael had on as soon as i saw it in the episode i couldn't stop laughing and to this day every time i watch that episode I cannot stop giggling over it because he looks so ridiculous. It's so goofy. (laughs) It's so goofy. Oh man. Uh, Yeah. 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 You you think, you think white's going to get in big trouble. David Wallace comes in and, um, and says that this is such a wonderful thing. And, uh, he's, he's in front of everyone. And and David Wallace says, Dwight, this is huge. And even Dwight says, that's what she said. (laughs) Yes. David Wallace laughs. Even David <laughs> Wallace laughs at that. It's perfect. It's perfect. Um, the cold open was was a, a, another one of those iconic ones where they go knock knock and it's a KGB KGB was like KGB will wait for no one and, and, and Jim slaps him and, and Dwight just looks at the camera and says it's true it's true <laughs> which is also another great meme from great the great meme perfect thing you can one you could use so many times. It's it's perfect. Uh, there there was another um, uh, plot where uh, Kevin wants to ask the girl Lynn from the from the uh, the the mixer they had, but Andy's giving him terrible advice on how to ask a girl out and just to- Andy <laughs> is the worst dating oh, advice giver on the face so of the planet. So bad. I like that. I, mean, I don't like Andy that much, but I like that. You know, you can't have another love story. I'll, obviously, Jim and Pam is a love story. And anytime Andy, like an, Andy and Aaron would try to do something or or the Angela and Andy disaster or something like that, it just went so badly for Andy. So bad. <laughs> yeah. So, it's but he's, perfect. he's the maker of his own bed, so to speak. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Eventually, Ke- Kevin sees Lynn and just says, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to ask you out. And she's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Did he just say, did he also just say boobs? He did. He went nice. Because he was like, <laughs> she was like, yeah. And he's like, nice. And then he goes, boobs. And she just like smiles. So I was like, oh, oh she's into him. Okay. I, I would have liked <laughs> to see them get together because they look, they look very similar. They, they, they look yeah. cute, cute together. Um, season four, ep- number 41, season four, episode eight, the, the deposition. Michael is put in an awkward position where Jan sues Dunder Mifflin for wrong for termination. And Michael is a witness. Meanwhile, Jim and Daryl are playing ping pong and Kelly and Pam are uh, smack talking, which, which just so it's ridiculous. So silly. It's, yeah. So uh, I love this cold open. It's where Pam, anytime Michael's in a meeting, Pam walks in, gives, gives her a note and says, oh, no, 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 I'll, th- this is an important meeting. Tell him, tell him I'll call him back. And it's it's like Pam just drawing, like, smiley faces <laughs> or something like that. It's so it's so cute. Or, like, good morning. Just, like, little happy yeah, little notes, really, like, you know? I love that they did a call back to this in a later season with Andy and Aaron. It was the same exact thing, but Aaron wrote on the note, like, your mother's dead or something like that. <laughs> Like no no no! Tell him I'll call him back. It's like how, how can you call him back? You just you just found out your mother died. So so good, <laughs> so good. Uh, so so Jan is suing Dunder Mifflin, and Michael, who is still working for Dunder Mifflin, has to testify against his own company for his girlfriend. Oh boy, that's a it's a, it's a. It's a sticky situation for Michael to be in. That from is the get go. Potentially disastrous. Like he works there. Exactly. He, he basically, I mean, yes, all kinds of crazy things happen in this episode, but still he has to choose between either the love of his life or the, the company he works for. I mean, you can't fire someone over something like this, but you can get into a lot of trouble with the company if you if you, you know, basically testify against them and, and badmouth them and stuff. Yeah, they can basically steamroll you from just about anything. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. There's Mike. Michael is given a deposition, and um, Jan 
just totally throws him under the bus. She takes his personal journal, his diary, and and, and puts it into evidence. And everyone's like, uh, can we have a copy of that? Even to- even Toby is like, uh, can I have a copy of that? <laughs> Which is like, you should only be given the pay, even if they were to make a copy of it, she should have only taken the pages that were relevant to the case yeah. not the whole diary not the entire thing not the part where it says ryan is who's this ryan that's as <laughs> as, as hot as jan but in a different way <laughs> that was the best because they're like who's ryan yeah who's who's this ryan <laughs> uh that ryan that guy <laughs> Toby, when Toby sees his eyes, he just busts he, out laughing. Like he knows what Ryan that is. Toby was every single one of us watching. Yes, <laughs> yes. I love the scene. So they're all reading it, and Michael is so embarrassed. He doesn't know where to sit. Finally, he sits next to Toby, and Toby is trying to be nice and console him and tell him it's okay and this happened to me and blah blah blah. And Michael just pushes the food, <laughs> try your food off the. T- he's just boot, nope Bro, just just yeah without even thinking like this is how much i hate you i don't care about oh it was like you asked to sit down there right yeah and so yeah. toby's like trying to console you and be like look it's gonna be all right i've been through this blah blah, blah. and michael's just like i hate you and i'm just gonna push your food off the nothing table nothing but nice nothing but nice to the guy's like there there your lunch is on the floor bye <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, the, the uh, um, the 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 person recording the notes a couple of times they had to read back the notes. Like they said, "How long were you under Jan?" And Michael's like, "That's what she said." That's what she <laughs> said. What do you, what, what do you mean? What is it? She said, "Like Ugh, it's a joke." <laughs> <laughs> the inflection was wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's critiquing the delivery. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god! Um, so, so yeah, so Jan, Jan totally throws him under the bus. But then the company also throws him under the bus because the, Jan said Jan like in her notes are like Michael sucks. I don't know what to do with him. Like he sucks, yeah. and he and even even David Wallace is like uh, he was never really like he sucks. He was he was never in in consideration for her job. So it's like every like this, this is all bad for Michael. It's horrible. Like he is literally getting trashed from both the company and his girlfriend at the same time. And you're just like, so he basically then, you know, throws Jan under the bus. Yeah. 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 He, he eventually sides with the company and I love at the end, he says, you expect to get screwed by your company, but you never expect to get screwed by your girlfriend. (laughs) And you're just kind of (laughs) like, well, um, yeah. And, And then there was a thing with, uh, Jim and, and Daryl playing ping pong and Jim's really bad at ping pong. I love that Jim convinced uh, Dwight who happens to have ping pong heroes. Of course he does. Of course and, he does to, because he's yeah, Dwight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so he convinces Dwight, I need you to play to help me with ping pong because of this important client. And then, and, and, and Jim is still really bad at it. Oh, he's so, and, so bad. And, and, uh, um, he says, I think Pam says something. He's like, "Oh, are you ready to play Daryl now?" And, and Jim's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Wait, this is all for Daryl, Jim? <laughs> don't you know Daryl's not a Daryl's not a client? He's a he's your coworker, you dummy!" He's like, oh, he works here, dumbass. Like, I, lo- I love that's what makes Dwight so good. Is he just so dense and he just he just plays everything so straight. He's so good. He's the typical, like, just takes everything at face value. Yeah. He takes everything literally. And it's that, that's, oh, it's so good. I do, I do love in this episode when Pam has had enough of Kelly's smack talk and she's like, all right, that's it. Let's go. And they are both so, so bad. And like, and like, horrible. One minute in, like, like Daryl whispers, you want to get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> um, number forty, season five, episode twenty-three. Michael Scott Paper Company. Michael, uh, Pam, and uh, Ryan Schaefer at working in such close quarters. After hosting a paper and pancakes luncheon, they are about to call it quits when Pam makes her first sale for the company. Um, 
Oh, and and Dwight and Andy are are fighting for Aaron. Yeah, and, that's actually really hilarious. <laughs> um, how about? I mean, I think well, a- Andy being such an amazing banjo player is is it, it was amazing. But that that yeah, when they were just going back and forth like on that song, like that's. that's it's super impressive. You're, you know, playing the guitar, <laughs> playing the banjo at the same time. And and Toby knocks on the window and he goes, stop it. <laughs> like, He's Toby. They're like so loud. <laughs> Toby, I know, I know, but they were so good. Like, like they're, having they their so little good. Con- they're having their own little concert and, and Toby puts an end to it. It's like, oh, <laughs> uh, I, I love the cold open. Michael comes driving in. He just says, it's Brittany, bitch. Like, like, I'm, I'm back. Um. The so so this is I think Hel- Aaron's first episode or something like that. She was just hired to replace Pam because I yes. think oh yeah in the previous episode that's when Michael got fired and he said who's coming with me and Pam and Pam goes with him and so I, I think that was mm-hmm. a bit but uh but but Aaron's real name is Aaron's actual name is Kelly but there's already a Kelly there so. Uh, it's like okay. Charles Meyer says, "Well, let's use middle names." And Kelly's like, "My middle name's Raj Rajan Ganda." Kevin <laughs> says, "I thought Rajan Ganda was a boy's name." Yeah, it's like I, Kevin. No, <laughs> I just can't. I, 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 I that kills me. It just absolutely kills me. Um, so yeah, things are going really bad because their their office is basically a closet that every time somebody flushes, they have to hear it. It's so it's, bad. I don't know. I I I couldn't work in that close to quarters with people. Oh god, like, no. Oh no, 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 no. I need I need some space. Yes. A wall, a cubicle, some, not, something. Not a corner. <laughs> and and they have no concept of. Like they're talking about each other. Like Ryan is talking to someone and he's talking about Pam while Pam's right there. It's like, yeah, she's a Scranton seven or something. Like that. So she's, a, she... she's a she's a she's a Scranton eight, but she's a New York seven or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, he's like, she's a Scranton seven. Well, it's like a New York six or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And like, she's like, she's right there. Um, yeah, and and uh you know, Michael was doing the same thing. I think he was talking to his mom. He's like, oh, I I can't deal with these people. It's like, like you guys are you are right there and you know they, they all have one laptop to fight over and ryan is doing important work i don't know what stupid thing he was doing but like nothing related to work oh i love how she pam was like what are you gonna do make another excel sheet <laughs> was like, oh my god so pam has has had he sne- she sneaks away goes back upstairs to dunder mifflin and begs for her job back and charles meyer's like we already hired your replacement sorry bye and she's like okay thanks it's like that uh, was so awkward to watch <laughs> it was extremely it was just extremely awkward now she didn't go out in the blaze of glory that michael did but she kind of did i mean she kind of just said hey i'm leaving and 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 runs away so yeah yeah um i they, they have the uh the thing on the on the um on the whiteboard it says you you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't make wayne gretzky michael scott right <laughs> <laughs> so a co-worker of mine actually had that on his whiteboard when i, I worked in that. an office yeah he had that on his board and i was like huh okay. i love that <laughs> yeah um a- another thing is charles asked jim for a rundown of clients and I, I I think it's you're basically just asking for a summary of your clients. I don't know what what you know. Jim didn't understand what a rundown was, but um, yeah, I don't understand how he didn't know what a rundown. Yeah, rundown. Yeah, it's is it's pretty one. it's pretty self explanatory. I love how he was asking um, Oscar and and Kevin what a rundown <laughs> is. It's like can you use it in a sentence? It's like yeah, I need a rundown. I'm like uh, that, that, use it in a it. different <laughs> sense. <laughs> Can you get a different sentence? <laughs> uh, number 39, season three, episode 19, safety training. After an accident in the warehouse, Daryl holds a training seminar. During the seminar about ergonomics and and sad, Michael feels both left out and emasculated when Daryl tells him he's a wimp. And the office starts a betting pool. 
so the oh, betting and pool the, is so good. <laughs> the betting pool is so good because they just they, they're I guess they're bored and they just decide to bet on everything. How many how many M and M's are in the jar? Um, whether Creed will notice that if it's a if it's a p- potato or an apple or something, <laughs> which is so good. And um, what's her face? Karen gets cleaned out. <laughs> like I don't know these people at all. <laughs> Um, the one about they bet on Kelly explaining Netflix. Uh, oh was- my gosh! <laughs> and the breakdown of like each one getting a certain amount of the money because of uh, right men- mentioning like, like a romantic comedy and someone and her mentioning something else. Like <laughs> yeah, uh, Pam, you get extra money for because she said awesome six times, and uh, yeah, Jimmy get money because she mentioned six rom coms. <laughs> it's so funny because that's you know back then that was the. You use Netflix to have mm-hmm. DVDs mailed to you. You and did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you had your queue. Yeah. Your queue was a big deal. And yeah. And, and I think you had to, you had to mail back one DVD to get back yes. another one or something like yes. that. Like that was a big deal at the time. Yeah. None of this just like push and play on your TV or on your uh, laptop or whatever kids. Yeah. That kids, was a thing. Yeah. Whippersnappers. <laughs> uh, oh, and, um, I don't know why. I don't know why, but Kevin says uh, something about somebody gave 10,000 to one odds. And and Kevin says, if anyone gives you 10,000 to one odds in anything, you take it. If John Callum, John Mellencamp ever wins an Oscar, I'm going to be very rich. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Kevin, no, you don't take those. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, John Mellencamp could win an Oscar because not in acting, but in you win an Oscar for music, so it's it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> uh, the cold open was 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 silly. Andy just came back from anger management, and he wants to be called Drew. And Jim's like, "Nope, not doing that." <laughs> yep, yep. He's like, I'm "Not doing that." <laughs> just rude as hell. It's like like somebody just went through a, a really tough thing, and he's he's asking for for a slight change. Like, nope. Not, not doing nope. it. I'm, I'm going to keep nope. disrespecting you. Like, okay. I'm I'm not going to lie. I have done that to a person. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not like the X-Lags Brownie person. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this was a different person, but he had the same name as another coworker there. And he asked to be called something else. And I was like, nope, not doing that. No, nope, no. Nope, uh, sorry. I, <laughs> I he just ref- kind of looked at me like, what? I, I, <laughs> I refuse like, to <laughs> participate in your stupid thing. And I'm just going to do whatever I want. Sorry. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but but the main thing in this episode is they had safety training in the warehouse because Michael is a menace. menace. <laughs> he is a like, I mean, Daryl was on a ladder. He he kicks the ladder from underneath him and says, Daryl, how's it hanging? Meanwhile, Daryl breaks an ankle. That's not. Bonnie, you just caused injuries to someone for a joke, dude. And when he's explaining it, he is laughing he's, hysterically. He's dying laughing. The dude is on crutches, man. And, and poor Daryl's like, like, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, I would be too. If someone <laughs> pushed the ladder out from underneath me after I got done being on the crutches, I'd be like, we're gonna have words. <laughs> they, they've I mean, they've, they've, there have been many times in the series where Michael's gone down to the warehouse and just wreaked havoc, knocked over things. I mean, there was some very dangerous equipment there. And he, he just wants to, he just thinks of it as like his own personal toy store and just, just, just wants to play. It, and like <laughs> explaining the fork truck truck. No, you yeah. cannot drive it. I can occasionally, no, you can never no, you drive can't. it. It's like, it's like, well, I'm the boss. No, you can't. <laughs> oh, so good. So then Michael decides to do his own training about ergonomics and seasonal affective disorder and they're the warehouse guys like wow this is this is this is some really tough stuff here wow you guys you guys are such wimps and michael I is love just, the chick playing uh doing a crossword puzzle <laughs> yeah the one warehouse girl she's like doing a crossword puzzle as they're going by it she's like oh. yeah <laughs> yeah so so he feels so bad he's like okay and and i think pam said well they had they had like props and stuff and you, you know, you know, their, their material is better. Like, okay, fine. We'll get our props. We'll, we'll do a demonstration. <laughs> get the trampoline. It's like, trampoline. no. 
gets a trampoline with a bunch of watermelons and they throw a watermelon and it lands right on a car. And I love the final shot of the episode is Stanley goes out to the parking lot and he sees watermelon all over his car. And he's just looking like, what the hell just Which is so great because before that, when they were throwing the watermelon, right? He was like, if that's Stanley's car, call the law offices. Yeah, call call, call my lawyer uh, if that's Stanley's car. (laughs) Uh, And it was Stanley's car. And it was. Um, I don't know how many times they had to. I mean, it's really impressive to throw a watermelon and get it to land on a car. Like that had to take. Now, and, and people say math and, and, you know, school doesn't mean anything. You have to you have to do some kind of mathematical calculations for, for stuff like that. Or or you just get a bunch of watermelons and do trial and error. You could do that, too. I'm I'm thinking it was probably trial and error. Probably. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody wanted to do the physics that is involved in that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think there were any rocket science on the on that uh, on that writing team. Um <laughs> So, so instead of the trampoline, they get a bouncy house. And I guess which, Michael is going to jump off the building into the bouncy house. Which I don't know which is safer, the bouncy house or the trampoline. I feel like they're both equally not going to work. I would, I would think both of them would result in instant death. Yes. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think that, I mean... That building is like at least five or six floors. So we're talking, yeah, there's no way. There's no way. He would instantly die. Yes. Because if you've ever seen like the stunt people that do those kind of falls and stuff, those like padded air mattress things, whatever they're called, are huge. huge. They're so thick. Not not a trampoline that let let five year olds play on, right? That thing would, would fold, console. yeah. That you got for a dollar one hundred ninety nine dollars at Walmart. That thing would 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 fold instantly and just yeah, yeah. That'd be it's made made for people under a hundred pounds, right? Right. <laughs> Ages five to nine, not forty five. Exactly. A, from, from from a large building, not from like a four or five story building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So everybody, so 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 Dwight says, everybody come out. Michael has an important message, or I don't know, I don't know what stupid thing he said. And everybody's like, uh, "Should we bring a jacket?" No, no, it's nice outside. Come on, <laughs> come on outside. And they start to do this. This Dwight and Michael do their little thing, and he said, "I'm so depressed." And depression isn't that just a fancy word for feeling bummed out, Dwight? You ignorant sluts. Oh, one of my one was- of my. <laughs> But no then, way today. <laughs> <laughs> but then he, he Michael realizes that the warehouse guys are not there. And that this is kind of the whole reason he's doing it to show that the warehouse that they have real problems too. So he's like, go get the warehouse and we'll redo this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jim says, you know, the first performance was a little off, but I really think they hit their stride in the, in the second one. I might even bring my parents tomorrow for the bat. <laughs> oh my goodness um and when jim and pam who and this is season three this is when jim is with karen Filippelli, and then jim and pam aren't really getting along too well but here they act like divorced parents and they're and they're and they're and their son is acting out <laughs> they're like hey they, they realize that he's about to plunge to his death and like hey michael why don't you just come on down we have a toy for you or something like that but that that was like the perfect analogy for it because I don't know had Jim and Pam not done what they did, and Michael very well would have jumped. I feel he could like. have died. He could have jumped. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. Um, there was an episode where Dwight got on a unicycle and was on a tight wa- on, on a tightrope between buildings or something like that. Similar thing. Like like you could have you could plunge to your death here. So. Oh, oh man. 
such such a good episode. Um, number thirty eight, season seven, episode twenty four. Dwight Kate Schrute, the acting manager. When Jim rejects Joe's offer, Dwight becomes acting manager in the Scranton branch, but an accident could cause his tenure to be short lived. So the cold open is uh, this is right after D'Angelo uh, nearly died, <laughs> or, and and uh, nobody's running, nobody's the manager, and everything is running fine, everything's fine. So Joe calls Jim and says, I, "I want you to be the manager," and Jim's like, "That's okay, no thanks, everything's fine the way it is." And immediately she calls Dwight, and Dwight says yes, and and Pam looks at Jim's like. My God, what have we done? <laughs> like, like <laughs> That's pretty much what I was. Immediately, the sons of John are like, my God, what, what just happened? <laughs> um, yeah, Dwight as manager is basically uh, basically a, a, a dictator. Um, everyone has to punch in. Nobody's allowed to eat lunch with each other. There's a 21-digit printer code. They say the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I love when Kevin messes up the printer code oh <laughs> and I mean, really? just throws the piece of paper at There's him. <laughs> There's a line of people waiting to use this copier and like, like three, seven, no, no, not seven. Like, like they're trying to even help them out. <laughs> um, it's so good. It's, it's, it's so good. So, so yeah, Dwight is, Dwight is in charge and he's loving it and he has a gun and his uncle gets him a holster so he's walking around like like he's the freaking sheriff and and then he twirls the gun and it goes off and <laughs> just and then everybody uses it to blackmail him which is really oh yeah so much <laughs> anybody would have done the exact same thing like oh oh you want me to, to keep a secret what are you gonna do for me much i mean it's yeah. an office that's how it's it goes a, oh yeah i would i i'd i'd ask for a, at least a week off an extra i'd ask for at least an, an extra week of vacation days yep i'd be like listen i'm taking next week off i'll yeah. pay don't yeah, bother yeah. me and yeah and there's <laughs> nothing you can do about it yeah yep. yeah so so everybody so <laughs> but jim decides his his little blackmail thing is to make jim, dwight do jazz hands whenever jim coughs um and and finally finally dwight says okay i i can't do this i shot a gun and joe's like you did what like that's and, and the other situation fired instantly oh you're, yeah you're, instantly. You're god instantly yeah here he's just he just goes back to his old job and uh yeah yeah and and, and no matter what dwight says they're like no you're like you shot a gun Poor, poor um, Andy lost his hearing and, and Daryl was playing a prank on him but pretending he couldn't hear him. That's good. It was so good. That was good. And and you know that would actually happen too. Oh, totally. Like, totally. That's a, that's, that's a good one. Uh, oh, yeah. there, was, there was also some, I, I hate Gabe so much. So he was psychotic about Aaron get, um, um, going out with Andy and he's like, mate, you made him promise, like you won't, you won't go back with her and stuff like that. Like, oh, oh, I, I hated that. Anything involving Gabe and Aaron was just so. It was very cringy. cringe. Yeah, yeah. was not cringe. a fan of that. Yeah. So in the end, uh, Joe says to Gabe, Jim, and T Toby, "You are the summer search committee." But while the search committee is trying to look, trying to find someone, I got to name a manager, the one with the least, the, the most seniority. And Jim's like, no, 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 you don't want to do that. That's 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 Creed. And Creed becomes the manager. <laughs> and he drives up in the car with the license plate, new manager. <laughs> Poor Ben was like, it was just a really nice car. He, he 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 I remember he had a he had a a, a meeting where it's like and, and half the people he named like what, what, didn't even work. He just didn't even work there. It was it was uh, that was that was good that was good he was uh he was telling customers you're fired and stuff like that um pam classic gave him creed. classic <laughs> yeah I, any anything involving creed is just just amazing it's um, gold it's 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 gold um maybe my favorite creed thing was the in the episode where uh packer took a dump in michael's office 
and they didn't know that they just heard, had a horrible smell in the office and Creed comes up and says who's making soup <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, number 37, season six, episode 10, murder. The entire office is preoccupied with rumors of Dunder Mifflin's bankruptcy. Michael tries to create a distraction by engaging everyone in a murder mystery game, but Jim wonders if that's a good idea. Uh, the cold open was really good. Dwight gave a martial arts demonstration, and Jim said, "Who? the only person that could fight you is you. So how would you defend against you? And it's just Dwight beating the crap out of each out of himself. <laughs> Which was hilarious because, first of all, how many how many takes did that scene take? Because I hope not how, a lot because was... it looked like that hurt. <laughs> yeah, very true. But like I Rain Wilson did such a great job because I would have just I wouldn't be able to keep my composure. And then and then at the end, he's like, well. The only way I could defeat myself is yelling the surprise and he hits himself in the nuts. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, Dunder Mifflin, it's it's looking really bad. Uh looks like they can't pay their bills and, and, and all this stuff, and everybody's freaking out that they're gonna lose their job. And Michael decides to play this silly murder mystery game. There's been a murder on that, and and, and using those 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 savannah accents and uh <laughs> Yeah, this is this is this is also one where uh, Creed walks in. He's he's late. He's like, "Sorry, I'm late, boss." And and Michael says, "Well, there's been a murder, and you're one of those suspects." He's like, "Yeah, okay," and he just runs away. He just, <laughs> just like, runs and gets in his car and leaves. <laughs> he's, not, he's like, "Oh, that's they caught me." Okay, <laughs> classic Creed um, doing Creed shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing. Uh, yeah, everybody was everybody was a character. Um, they all had their goofy accents. It was, it was, it was really silly. Uh, and in the end, they, uh, they all, they were all pointing guns at each other. There's that pointing gun meme. <laughs> it was like, basically the Spider-Man meme where they yeah. are all three Spider-Men are pointing at each other. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> um, uh, Pam is one of the people that are pointing guns and, Jim's like, uh, can we go home? <laughs> Pam's like, I'm not, I'm not taking the rap for this. <laughs> like, She's like, the keys are in my purse. Go start the car. Yeah. <laughs> and in the end, it's it's Michael, Andy, and Dwight, and they just shoot each other. They just, they just fake, they just, they just destroy each they're, other. And they're all dead. Their their quote unquote death scenes are hilarious. And oh then man, Dwight's like laying on the ground, going like this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Blood spurt, blood spurt, blood spurt. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was, it was, it was silly. Um, Jim was really upset, you know. Basically, he just wanted them to do work as usual. And then he realized, um, this is probably a really good idea that we pretend to, to have a murder mystery game because things are really bad. So yeah. Yeah. Number 36, season three, episode eight, the merger. Dwight tries to, oh yeah, Dwight tries to be running, Toby's running time. <laughs> um, after the Stanford branch closes, the employees move to Scranton and Dwight tries to get Michael to fire one of the Stanford employees. Um, Jan promotes Jim to number two and Andy and, disagree, Andy and Dwight disagree who's number three. And yeah, so this is this is the episode when all the people from the Stanford branch come over to Scranton and I, I I love that in every single episode somebody's gone. It's like it's like like an ep- like 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 the game Survivor or something like that. Like they just fall fall off one by one for for whatever reason. Um, yeah, yeah, and and then we have the whole thing of how is Jim and Pam? How are they going to be? Because this is the first time Jim is back after all that happened, and and, and now Pam is like so excited to see him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, she's so excited to see him and he wasn't even sure whether he wanted to come back, but now he's like, he's not officially with Karen, but they're definitely like buddies at this point. They're a thing. Yeah. They're they're, they're a thing. They're, they're a thing. And, and Pam is just, whenever she sees Jim and Karen together, her, she's like, she's like not happy. Mm -hmm. She's, she's yeah. There was, there was one where like, Aaron just gives him gum or something like that. She's like, Ooh, what the heck is going on here? So yeah. Um, 
um the so so they bring so they bring everybody in the conference room and they have an orientation video and it's lazy scranton and this is just so good oh my goodness this is so good such a perfect parody of of lazy sunday it's um, so good. It's so good. It's like call poison control if you're bit by a spider, but check that it's covered by your health care provider. <laughs> so good. So good. There's actually, I think they actually like the, the entire video. They're like, like, like the, there's you can see like the full video of it. It's 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 so good. Um, but the the new people are not getting along at all with the old people. Um Martin. Uh, the black guy tries to bond with Stanley, like to do this thing, and Stanley's like, "Whatever." <laughs> Stan- yeah, basically, Stanley like grunts at him, like, Ugh. "Right, right." It's like, no, no, we're not, we're not a thing. So, but um, Creed, the 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 lady is um, the one lady is 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 breastfeeding, and Creed is Creed took a picture of it and put it in the had- locker. Yeah, and she's like. And I mean, I would be appalled by that. I'd be like, listen, yo, where did you, how, how? Yeah, how did this even happen? <laughs> um, uh, um, this is, oh, okay. So it, 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 toward the end, Hannah says, Tony was right, this 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 environment is dysfunctional. And Angela says, maybe that's because some people treat it, treat it like their own private Hoover, Hooters strip club. And Michael says, well, Angela, hold on. Hooters is a restaurant with over 400 new locations worldwide. I wonder if he had to say that because he, she just said that Hooters is a strip club. It's like, you know, hey, we have scantily clad women serving things, but we're not a strip club. You better you better do a like, legal, legal get her better, better get involved here. That could be that could be. I never thought of that. Yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder if that that happened. But um, so they have the. They have the the meeting and they put everyone on. They put the, the, the stand for people on a table. <laughs> this is absurd. <laughs> and absurd. the very large guy, he's like, I can't do this. The very large guy can't get up. Like, Don't worry, we'll help you. Everybody just grab a bunch. Of you. <laughs> like, and then he's like, no, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. done. I'm done. And then he quits. And Michael's like, you can't quit. You're fired. And and Jan's like, did you just fire a guy that quits? Now we have to pay him benefits, you idiot. He's like, yeah, I took care of that problem. <laughs> it's like, you should have just let him quit. Now we don't just, have to pay. We wouldn't have had quit. a severance package. <laughs> yeah. It's actually, I mean, in the end, Michael alienating every single person, Stanford person, actually saves the company money. So, <laughs> except yeah. for this time, <laughs> um, I, I also between um, Phyllis and Karen, Karen can't handle Phyllis's smells, and uh, Karen's like, "I'm I'm allergic to your smell." And and uh, she, she called it a funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh. <laughs> And she's like, Bob Vance gave me this. And she's like, who's Bob Vance? And Phil says, you have a lot to learn from about this town, sweetie. I was like, whoa, Phyllis about to get real. Phyllis. <laughs> See, I often wonder, it's like, if, if I were to, if I were a customer of Dunder Mifflin, who would I want to buy paper from? I don't I don't see Phyllis as a good salesperson. I can't imagine she unless she, like she's like has his mom vibe or something like that. Stanley, probably- I can't imagine. Sorry, go ahead. I, I, saw, I, I feel like Phyllis probably has like that sweet, bubbly personality, you know, like yeah. she's probably just like sweet over the phone and, you know, just like. Like the mom or the grandma. And, or yeah, something. yeah. Yeah. And then until you, you know, mess with her and then she's like, you got a lot to learn about this town. Too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. Stanley, I don't know if I mean, Stanley would probably have like this cool vibe, like kind of you, you just just like you know friendly or whatever jim seems like you know the cool guy or whatever dwight i'd be afraid to to buy paper from he's dwight dwight probably is like i will die for you that's you know it's like yes dwight is that i will do anything you want me to salesperson yeah yeah to sell you this paper he's 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 way over the top so so (laughs) yeah i get that all right so that's 
that brings an end to this. All right. So, so you have a podcast. I do. What's, um, it, what's it called? Am, what's it about? So I am the co-host of From Comics to Cinemas podcast. And twice a month, we take a comic book character, whether it be Marvel, DC, Image. Um, we've gone a little bit off the road ropes a little bit. We even went some did some Buffy as well. So we look at how they are in the comics and how they are then portrayed either in TV or movies, or if they're not quite yet in the TV or movies like Banshee, um, what we would like to see them come in with, who might, who, who we might like to see play them and that sort of thing. And we go over basically like a little comic book history, how they have their powers, what powers they have and our favorite stories. It's so big because when you, whenever you watch, uh, whenever you watch a, a movie, they have a character, and that character is from the comics. But sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's very similar, and sometimes they're completely different. So yes. it's important yes. to talk about that. And we ran into that with um, Thor: Love and Thunder with Gore the God Butcher. Totally. Different oh, in the really? Comics. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was very upset when I saw that movie. <laughs> Because he's such a good villain in the comics, and I feel like he was made a mockery of. Spoiler alert! <laughs> they do that a lot. They do that mm-hmm. a lot in in these in these MCU movies, where yes. it's like such a in the comics they had such a big story and they were so powerful, and then the movie they're like the villain of the week, and it's like yes. oh they're they're here they're gone like but yes you, but did, what did you do with this character <laughs> you 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 butchered this character. Yeah, it makes me sad when they do that. But so we take a look at that. We're on Spotify, um, Amazon. You can find us on a variety of platforms like Google also. Wherever so. wherever podcasts are. Yes, wherever are you get your <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> where, where else can people find you? Um, you can find me on Twitch. I also have a gaming channel, Katie underscore underscore candy. I play a variety of games, mostly first person shooters, and I'm the most okayest. <laughs> and you have you have the most okayest uh, gamer chair. I do. I, I have the uh, Secret Labs Titan Evo. So comfy. I love it. <laughs> Got it. And it matches my headset. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And you also have the best headset. So. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. This was so much fun. I was so excited that somebody else wanted to talk to the office. And that this was awesome. I loved awesome. it. Thank you so much for having me. I All appreciate right. it. All right. See you. Bye.